So here we go, mission number seven of the Epsom campaign. We have today an armed recce slash intercept. The flight plan, let's go to a better map. This one here looks like we head south to basically a patrol area south of Khan. It's a nice way of summarizing this. Um Exact courses at the discretion of the squadron. That sounds fine. Take off at 11 in the morning. Forming up at the usual altitude and then heading south. Climbing to 6,000 feet across the lines. Um, I'm just trying to see what my actual task is supposed to be. Yeah, kneeboard contains various maps. Okay, okay. Monitor channel D for instructions. Okay, here's the most important bit. Enemy air activity they, uh, has been increasing, it looks like. This doesn't look terribly different from the information we've seen for the other missions, and I can't see any indication there's a specific task for us to achieve. So it looks like it's just a matter of getting airborne, um, which is the first leg. Um, okay, heading to Viaz and Via first. So we head out on this western course, for, uh, western course first, and then we go east. Okay, that looks pretty self-explanatory. Right, in cockpit we are. We ditch the briefing screen and wait for the little stutters to clear. Okie dokie. Um, just for reference, I know a few people have asked me about this. Um, I get quite good frame rate. Um, I'm getting 65 frames per second here on the ground currently. I'll leave the frame counter in the top left-hand corner of the screen. Because... Um, Quite a few people have asked me about to how smooth it is, and it's actually pretty bloody good for me. I'll also just throw the graphics settings up. Now, that might not be so visible. It's quite faded. What if I do that? Um, for those that want to have a look at what my graphics are doing. There we go. Enough of that nonsense. Let's get on with the Michioni. Right, traffic control. Let's get ourselves engine start permitted. Check that my gear is down and my flaps are in the up position for starters. Have to just align the HOTAS. Okay, We're cleared for startup. I'm just going to trim myself before we do anything silly. Magnetos and switch covers. Prime the engine. Flick that bad boy open. That'll do for priming. It's 11 in the morning, so we don't want to over prime. Get cooking. I will add, add a little bit of cockpit lighting. And you can hear my wingman over there getting all ready to go. We're going to turn left, it looks like. Close that. And request taxi. Good, there's our clearance. Let's toot line over. Now finally got the uh, Mission 6 finished, so this is actually the first time I've had a look at this one, Mission 7. Um, mission 6 took me quite a few attempts um, because I had uh, DCS freezes and wingmen doing all sorts of crazy stuff, but we finally got a workable kind of mission out of it. So I'm hoping I can get this one done um, in one go, one recording. We'll certainly find out. I'll tell you if it's uh, the not the first recording. But this is the first recording. So here's hoping we get some... Um, 
Okay, there's our clearance. Currently no contacts, right. So there's actually two other squadrons, Shebang and Lobster, just got airborne. So I know of probably 16 other spits in the kind of battle area. Just recentering my track IR there. I think I'm going to do it again. And now's where I've got to actually focus on my takeoff rather than focus on my track IR. It's a little bit of fiddling with the um, elevators there because I wasn't really thinking about what I was doing but we're airborne so and we're still alive so what does it matter right raise the gear confirming that the flaps are in the up position make a general right hand turn and we're above 140 so we can settle the engine well above 140 Right, carry on as brief. Now, I'm getting um, 100 frames per second intermittently there. It's jumping now between about 70 and 100. Very rapid jumps. So it's a very unstable frame rate, but it's high. Down to 65 and then up to 90 something. If I look away from the ground, 120, 130. If I look down at the ground, I'm getting 40. So there you go, there's just a little bit of an indication of the range of frame rates I'm getting very very broad looking up at the sky there 95 to 150 even at one point I'm going to maintain this right turn for a little bit longer because I want to make sure all my dudes are in position going to descend and throttle back and then I'm going to climb back up. This gives the AI a chance to catch up. I saw on the ED forums a couple of guys were saying that the AI were running out of fuel very quickly. Now what's happening is the AI really smashed the engines in order to stay in formation. You can actually hear it if you've got the world volume turned up loud. They will, if they're out of position, they will basically go full throttle in order to catch up and get in position. So what you need to do is fly as slow as possible in order to allow the AI to catch up to you. It also does mean you need to do this circling over your base before you leave. As you can see, one's formed up behind me, but the other ones are still not in position. So they're going to be going full throttle to catch up. So the more time you spend just flying nice and slow so your wingman can get in position. Now if I turn left I'll even find it easier here because I'll do an S turn and then they can slot in behind. I'm right down at 140 now so they should all be catching up. I can return my engine to an acceptable setting. And the second flight is probably going to start forming on the right. Okay. You can actually hear the engines. They're roaring pretty loudly. So that's why the AI is going to run out of fuel on you really quickly. Just because they have to push their engines all the time to stay in formation. So you've got to think about that. Just fly low settings, really low settings. I mean, okay, my boost is on plus 8 currently, but um, I really want to be can get away with flying on plus 2 boost at about 2200 RPM. Right down there. It's another squadron airborne. If you can hear sipping sounds, um, that's because I've got a scotch with me here today in the cockpit. No cats today, but we do have a scotch. Sounds like a reasonable compromise to me. It's a rather tasty Highland, actually. I'll, um, if I can find a screeny um, of it, I'll throw a screenshot up on. Um, it's not direct from this distillery. It's. Um, it's one that's been commissioned by a whiskey trader.
Okay, so the other section is formed up over there. We've now got three at the front and one just catching up. So he'll be blasting full throttle, that guy there, to catch up. But he took off later than everybody else. Now, I just heard another engine throttle down and throttle back up. So they are throttling down again. You can hear it. So basically, every time you turn your aeroplane or do anything really with your engine settings or your attitude, they'll throttle up so they can quickly get back in position. So you need to fly as gently and maintain basically hands-off flight as much as possible in order to give your wingman the best chance. Now if I turn left here onto 180, listen. There. They've just increased their engine tone. That was a tiny little turn. I only turned about um, 10 degrees, but it was enough for them to get out of position and have to force full throttle. Oh, hello. I've got a l very large formation. Uh, in fact, two groups of four up there above cloud. We're going to have to climb. We're supposed to cross at 6,000 feet anyway, so we're nearly there, but I'm going to go up. Anyway, so the chaps who were asking about their wingman running out of fuel, that is how you mitigate that situation. Just don't change your attitude, basically, until you... Angels 12. Okay, that's that lot out in front of us. They'll be all shot down by the time we get there. Just west of Khan, Angels 12. Ah, there! I've got 12 aircraft up there, not four. And they're in wide formation. All right, gents. We're throttling forward. There is actually 12. Someone's been telling pork pies about four aircraft. I think that looks... Ah, oh, sorry, there's eight. It looks like two flights of four in very wide formation. And uh, it looks like bunyap has been using that wide formation for the German flight. So we've got to gain ourselves another 6,000 feet here in rapid time. Those things can climb. Now, one of that contact was called out by these guys in front. It's hard to say. Stutter, right. I'm still getting 70 frames per second, but I'm getting lots of stutter. So you can see it's not graphics issues. It's um, scripting or um, data and information that's being passed backwards and forwards. So the, the frames per second are actually fine. We've got no problem with uh, graphics. It's a matter of how much uh, scripting there's, coding, or objects being processed, something like that. What's causing the stutters? Still got uh, 80 frames per second, so it's really smooth um, graphics wise. Anyway, enough said about that. I've still got this two formations of four at long nine o'clock, and I've got two formations of four at 12. We are now climbing through 8,000 feet. Another squadron behind us on the right. Looks like we may have the numbers here. I think I've got time for a quick sip of whiskey. I've also recently started using um, OBS for recording since about four months ago. It's been really good because you can manually change the volume of the various different um, audio channels post recording. Okay, we've got a lot of movement. These four aircraft up here. Oh, what is that? Something just been dropping down in front of me. Can't say. My guys are just starting to throttle up behind here. Those are Spitfires swinging back around here. Okay, we can now turn left to look at those two flights of four that are inbound. Let's go, combat power, gentlemen. Right, these four Spits are heading straight towards them. I've got two formations of four about to be engaged by this group of four Spits. There are 
going to be in another group of four here. So we are now 16 Spitfires. 8 190s via Bocage Angels 10. That's us. Okay. 8 plus 8 plus 8. There are 24 aircraft entering this furball right now. Dead ahead. Look at this. You don't see this every day. All right, chaps, in we go. Flight, engage bandits. Second section, engage bandits. In we go. What is that? Unsure, unclear. All right, we're going to go up here. Look at the scrap behind me. I've not seen this in DCS before. Okay. I've got a 190 in front of me here. I'm closing on him. Oh, stutter, stutter, stutter. Okay, I'm making shots off on this guy. Ah, just shot a bit too late. Where's he gone? Out of stutters, stutters. Still got. Ah, now I'm down to 35 frames per second. So now the frame rate's also getting hit. Yeah, I've got oof, all sorts of stuff going on here. Okay. That 109's just got the 190 just got his tail. Just had his uh, wing chopped off. My wingmen are getting mental back there. I still haven't seen, um, apart from that first one, I'm having trouble seeing anything up here. All Spitfires. Oh, there's one. Okay, I think I see one. Slightly higher. Over there. Yep, square wings, I think. Is it got square wings? No, Spitfire. Okay, I think it's clear now. All Spitfires. That was all over very quickly. Yep. Okay. Well, we didn't see much of that. But that was one hell of a fight for a few seconds there. Um, now it's time to reform very quickly here, so let's get the flight back in position. Uh, rejoin. And rejoin. Parachute lazily flying past. Well, that flight lasted. That fight lasted all of about 15 to 20 seconds. Very fast, in and out, like lightning. Okay, so it sounds like the bandits are bugging out. Well, they head that way. I do have another bit of a scrap developing over there, I think. Hard to tell. But my squadron is all basically reformed, I think. Yeah, I've got two aircraft over here. Um, I'm missing my immediate section, but uh, I'm sure they'll reform. We'll head south a little. Here, Merlins, um, as my wingmen start closing, and there we go. There they are. Okay, so frame rate's now back up to f 55 to 60, so it's recovered somewhat. Looks like there's a lot of aircraft way off in that direction. That looks like Lisay Airfield, I think. Or is that, no, that's north of Khan. I'm a little bit disorientated here. Yeah, that's north. So we'll go left, we'll head a bit south, but 
What is that? Flak. I thought that was aircraft diving on us. Just flak firing. The formation of four Spitfires on their way past. Okay, well that was incredibly thrilling. Um, that was a real nice sight when that first squadron engaged those 190s and the whole thing just became a turning, twisting mass of aircraft. It cost me quite a few frames. If you've got a, um, a lower spec system, this mission will kill you. Um, I'm sorry to say it, but um, I'm going to readjust my seat position here. That was a frame killer for me. There's not going to be many systems that are going to be able to tolerate that. It's quite interesting because there's a bit of a stress test here for both the platform and for our systems. Um, which is quite good in some respects. Well, I think it may all be over. We may be RTB very shortly. I'm sorry I couldn't provide you with any shooting of my own. I guess in the words of Johnny Johnson, the leader's job is to bring as many of his squadron's guns to bear as possible. And it's not just about positioning himself in the best best position but to try and get as many of his wingmen engaged or as many of his squadron engaged I think there's just so many of them then also that my uh, the AI actually worked because there was targets everywhere I was a bit worried I wasn't going to come out of that one alive actually <laughs> like anything could have latched onto my six Okay. Frame rate's up around 70 to 80, but I've still got a lot of stutters. Okay. I don't think there's any much point in us... Uh, I don't think there's much point in us chasing them off down to the east and south. What I think we'll do is we'll just patrol for a little bit longer and if anything pops up we'll go and engage it but I think we can consider RTB in not too distant future. I'm a little bit nervous about the stuttering. I'm also interested in what's going on off to my left here. I've got a formation of aircraft dropping quite rapidly down to ground level. It may be time for us to go do some ground pounding. Let's have a look at the knee board and we'll try and check out we'll try and work out where the front lines are because maybe we should go and attack some ground units. So at least we get some uh... Okay, anything over via via Villa Villa via Bocage? be a target. Basically anything around where we are now can be considered a target. And there's a lot of stuff over there. So what I think we're going to do is we are going to RTB and on the way through we're going to drop in and have a wee squirt at oh, aerial contacts underneath this cloud. Let's drop in now chaps. We'll check what they are. If they're hostile we'll rat a tat tat if not, we'll pick up some ground units on the way through. Okay, they're down there below this cloud. Looks like they're making a run in on a ground target, potentially. Let's get lower. Going to be going fast down here through this drop. Okay, I've got eyes on. going to come right so that we're on a bit of an intercept path. What are they? 
looks like Spitfires to me. Yep, a load of Spitfires. And we'll join up to them, see what they're after. Okay, 10 target 10 o'clock. Okay, I'm gonna go flight. Engage ground targets. Second flight. Engage ground targets. There's another squadron. Okay, I've ordered my guys to get involved with attacking ground targets. So I'm gonna roll up and see what they're in. Okay, where are they chaps? Where are these ground targets? Show me so I can make a run on my own as well. Are you attacking? Yes you are. He's attacking. Here we go, what are they attacking? What's the target, chaps? What's the target? Oh. Ah, I see some stuff on the road down here. Okay, here we go. It looks like trucks. Yep. Oh, air defense. Got a flat gun there. Okay, up and down. Push the nose down after going up. That, try and get below the uh, ridge line here too, so the flat can't hit me. Drop back into the valley. Okay, I'm not sure if I got any hits then, but it was a nice little run. Now we'll climb up. Checking the engine temps, we're okay, we didn't lose anything. Okay, there's no sign that I got any hits back there. Ah, there's the target area. Oh, the flat gun's been destroyed. Excellent. So in this paddock now, we've got uh, three more vehicles. It looks like the oh, four more vehicles. It looks like a flat gun's been destroyed. This looks like half tracks, maybe. Tractors, I don't know. Okay, someone else is engaging air defenses here. Did I get any? Did I get any score on that one? Oh, hello. Yes, I did. Okay, one of those trucks is moving now. He's going defensive. Let's drop in. Try and nail that vehicle. Low frame right now. Thirty-seven frames. So we're right down about minimum. Minimum acceptable frame rate. Okay. I'll try and get this truck on the left here. It's not going to be easy. I need lots of. Oh, that was close. I had lots of left rudder in then too. I don't think I hit him. No. I had shitloads of left rudder in then to um, try and correct the nose onto him. I think I entered that dive in an unstable, uh, unbalanced or uncoordinated fashion. I'm going to try and get another run on him here. This will be my last pass. Exit, well done, chaps. Oh, I did get that guy. Okay, let's try this other truck here. Okay. Let's uh, get out of here then. Follow the valley. Has a nice look at some of the landscape around here. See, it's not flat. There are some really cool pieces of terrain on this map. Okay, I'll let those guys make their last attacks and then we are out of here. Climb hard, try and get back above the flak. Just need to balance it out with the uh, slip indicators, just showing me off a bit there. A couple of bits of trimming. Engine temps look good. Okay, time to get my chaps to rejoin. So, flight. Rejoin flight. formation. Get the second section to uh, rejoin. And then I'll be sending everyone home RTB very shortly. Okay, I want to turn to the north now. Okay, 
Okay. Mushroom sector or mushroom squadron or RTB. We're at 5,000 feet, so we don't have to climb terribly much higher now. You can see my uh, various squad mates here all returning. There's the target down there, those smokes that we hit. So that was quite profitable, actually, in the end. We uh, had a massive scrap with Jerry. Um, Jerry left, what was left of Jerry left, and then we managed to nail a few vehicles down here. Another aircraft, probably going to swing back in here, I imagine. Probably another one of ours. Okay, take my hands off the stick now just to relax myself and relax the aeroplane. Okay, turning right now again. There's the coast up there. That's our. Uh, Heading basically, just looking for Kapi K airfield. I want to give that a wide berth. Okay, there's Kapi K, I think, up over there. Yep. So I want to give that a relatively wide berth. We're just about over Via Bocage. I'm just a bit nervous about the flak at this location. That could be it there, actually. Okay, so I'm hoping we're north of it already. Let's keep climbing, though. I can hear friendly engines. The sound radar is very helpful, but to be honest, I really don't think you would be able to hear that Merlin back there over the top of this Merlin sitting right here. I just don't think it's uh, realistic at all. But no, I haven't done actual noise modeling. I do have some friends who do noise modeling professionally, but um, I don't have the... Uh, sound pressure specs for the Merlin engine at various RPM settings so I couldn't get them to do the uh, the modeling for me right I'm going to send the second section to RTB Because they are more likely to be lower on fuel and then I'm going to get a little bit closer to the field and then I'm going to tell my chaps to do the same uh, in the first section. Quite a lot of effort, I think, has gone into the mission timings um, in this mission because it's very hard, I know from experience, it's very hard to plan a mission so that the aircraft actually so that the we'll just come left so that the aircraft actually meet each other. Oh, there's current couple go there. It's very hard to make it happen so that the aircraft meet each other in the air. Um, mission making with AI is notoriously difficult and you have to test and test and test again in order to make sure that the likelihood that the human players in the AI are going to meet um, is high enough and in that mission it worked out absolutely perfectly I'm sure we ran into them bang about where um, Bunyap wanted us to run into them so that was quite nice I can appreciate the amount of effort that's gone into making sure that happens. It's, um, it's tiresome work. You know, make a change, then test the mission. If it doesn't work, make another change, test again. It's been hours working on a single mission. No, there's Kapi K. I was right the first time about its location. Let's start descending now. Because I think we've got our field just in front of us. Have a quick look at old Mappy Mappy Roo over here. There we are. And we're heading straight for 
the wrong F there, we want St. Croix, which is over there next to the uh, river mouth in the harbour. So let's tell St. Croix that we are. Actually, what I'll do is I'll send my flight home first. Navigation, flight base. Got to peel off. Here they go. Take a screenshot. Might use that as a. Uh, oh, there's three of them. That's a nicer shot. Ah, they won't come out. They're not close enough. So the rest of my flight is now also RTB. The lead flight was sent home before. Oh, that's me checking out returning to base. So I didn't even have to put the call in. It knew what I was thinking. A little bit more whiskey before we land. Yes, I'm aware that you shouldn't drink and fly. The thing is, we're not actually flying. It's not real. So you don't need to worry. You don't need to get upset. It's just pretend. Right, throttle back, full fine, trim the machine out because it likes to jump around like a like a mushroom lobster. There's our airfield over there, Saint Croix, Saint Croix, going to be landing at Saint Croix. When I was about 12 years old, I... Um, got a book out of the library on the Grand Prix and uh, I really thought it was Grand Prix. That's how it's written. So I was reading a book about Grand Prix. How's that for a humorous anecdote? There is three aircraft from the other section. I'm actually going to request um, landing I think. I'm going to try and sneak in before these buggers. There is St. Croix. Okay, I'm going to make a slightly squarer circuit here. Runway 27. Excellent. So we're going to be using the runway that I'm sort of lining up on already. There are a lot of aircraft here. There are a lot of aircraft here. <laughs> Yuppie oi. 40 frames per second. And... I'll take a landing, please. Okie dokie. So let's set ourselves up. Oh, I might even use my um, nav lights. Why not? Open the canopy. The 160 here, which is just delicious. Whoa. Look at that busy season here at St. Croix. Okay, I think it's time for a bit of gear. <laughs> I think the word gear only has um, dual meanings in Britain. I don't think the American audience is... Uh... will appreciate that as much. Okay, so, as usual for me, the nice fast approach. I say nice because I like it, not because it's nice according to the text. Or I've got a little bit of a crosswind here, I can already feel the... I think it's a little bit of a crosswind. Yeah, a fraction. Not as much as I thought though. Oh, 100, we're slow. Although we're quite... got high for angle, so I think we'll be okay. Oh, this is slower than usual. Oh, there's going to be a few happy faces that I'm coming in slower. Very low frame rate now. Quite stuttery. Oh, that's why I don't come in slow. That is why I don't come in slow. The nose attitude's too high. 
sorry, you have to lower the nose to keep airborne airspeed. And uh, well, although once you're down, it's a lot easier. I'll grant them that. The buggers, let's get off this godforsaken runway. Okay, so mission seven complete. Pretty entertaining, I've got to say, but really taxing on the machine. That is uh, going to be generating a bit of heat in my in my CPU, no doubt. Okay, so let's uh, give it a bit of throttle and lean the mixture out. Turn off all that fuel that's sitting in there, being evil. Jolly good. Close those switches. Turn off those magnetos. Is there anyone on finals? There is actually someone on finals, I think, over here. It's quite, uh, it's quite a tradition for me to watch the first AI aircraft. And I can turn this light off here. And turn the fuel pumps and whatnot off. There's a hungry pack. Let's watch this chap in. I've got a nice view next to this runway, and hopefully it doesn't think I'm on the runway, so hopefully it won't wave him around, because I do like to observe their landings. You can see the windsock from this angle. It's a little bit better. You can see that as a, probably a 20 degree offset crosswind, but it's only a few knots. It's, uh, pretty limp looking windsock so this guy doesn't have too many excuses frame rates hovering between 40 and 60 by the way in he comes Yeah, yeah, stop showing off. Oh, that's an early flare. Oh, no, no, I didn't like flaring. I don't want to flare. No, I do want to flare. Three points. A little bit of, uh, I don't know what that white stuff was. Yeah, whatever, mate. Whatever. I'd be able to land like that too if I was AI. <laughs> 